Hi, Caleb with Brown House here, back again with Andrew from Surefire. And this is the second part of the weapon light videos we're doing, you know, part two of two, yeah? Yeah, so, yeah. All right, so let's jump right into it. This one here is gonna be specifically focused on weapon mounted lights for your long guns. Andrew, take us through what Surefire has in that selection. Yeah, so we have um, many different weapon light or long gun weapon lights, um, depending on what your application is, what your desires are out of the weapon light. Um, so our, our Scout light is kind of our flagship uh, weapon light line right now. Um, I'll talk first about the mounting for them because um, that's a pretty important part. So and, and all the lights that we're gonna be talking about here use the same type of uh, what we call now our Scout light Pro mount. So what that is, is the body of the light has a machined mount on it with a center screw that attaches to the cleat itself. And by the cleat, I mean the part that attaches to the firearm. Um, so right here you see that's an M-lock uh, variant. We also have a Picatinny cleat. And all of these Scout lights ship with both a Picatinny and an M-lock cleat. So no matter what you're mounting it to or where you're mounting it, uh, we have you covered as far as that option goes. But what's really nice about this is it allows you to rotate the, the weapon light to get it as tucked in or as tight to the firearm as absolutely possible, um, or put it in the exact position that you want depending on where you want the switch. Uh, so that makes it really nice for, for you know maintaining a low profile and activating it. Once you have it in the position that you want, you can go ahead and tighten that screw from the front um, if you want to leave it at like 95% tightness so you can still move it, sometimes if you're butting it up against, you know, certain laser systems have a, an elevation adjustment or a windage adjustment that might sit right below the light. So sometimes it's nice to run it at like 95% tight so you can move that light out of the way if you need to make an adjustment or re-zero that device. Um, and it's the way that the cleat works, it will stay at that same tightness. It won't loosen up. Um, so yeah, that's just a quick note about the, the Scout Light Pro. Um, it's the best mounting system that there is out there. You know, most most uh, different options out there on the market, you're gonna have to buy an accessory mount um, to be able to get what you get out of this. And then you're just adding layers of not only um, material and weight, but you're adding another set of screws in between the firearm and your weapon light, another thing of, of, that could possibly come loose. So uh, minimizing that is really, really nice. And the, and the Scout Light Pro does a really good job at that. Yeah, and you know, with that, I have rifles at home that have those extra systems on them because mm -hmm. it was before that actually came out. And it, you ended up having to get like something like the Midwest Industries cleat that kind of tucks it in so that you could get it tucked close into the rail. Uh, but now you don't need that. You just buy the light and you're set up for it. Yeah, I mean, there was a really a, a big, you know, kind of cottage industry of, uh, of different mounts and they're really good options there for right. sure. But um, definitely if you can get it out of the box, you know, not only are you saving money, but it's definitely a more efficient way to, to get it where you want it. So definitely. Um, stepping into the, the different products in the line, um, so we'll start right here with the Micro Scout. Um, <laughs> this light is uh, is a little bit controversial because people were like, what's it for? You know, we had some specific customers that uh, wanted this and, and therefore we were making it. We decided to make it uh, obviously available for everybody. Um, it's a AAA light, it's 300 lumens. So it's, you know, it's a, uh, not as bright as some of our other weapon lights, but you know, considering the small firearms that this is kind of meant to go on, like that Rattler up there, um, or even smaller guns, uh, it, it's it's perfectly fine, especially if you're in a very very low light environment. You know what I mean? Not right. to, not much ambient light. So, um, really awesome, super low profile. Uh, it has a shrouded uh, push button tail cap, so that means if if the weapon's slung, um, you're not going to be accidentally you know turning that light on without without actually cognizantly wanting to. So that's the Micro Scout light. AAA battery, I think I mentioned that. If I didn't, that's what it is. Um, then we gotta go into our flagship line uh, of Scout lights. So this is the Mini Scout. Um, Mini Scout is one CR123. Uh, it's 500 lumens of white light. This has our hybrid beam pattern. So what that means is uh, it has a nice hot spot, but still a good amount of peripheral spill. Really good general purpose beam pattern. Um, again, the Scout Light Pro comes with both the Picatinny and the M-Lock cleat. Um, and out of the box, it comes with our, it's called a Z68, but it's a shrouded push button tail cap. So you can push it for momentary. Sorry, as I blind no, you. Yeah, I, I'm <laughs> not gonna say anything. Else, but, yeah. uh, you can push it for momentary or you can click it for constant on. Okay. Um, so both options there. Stepping up, um, this is our dual fuel scout light. 
the dual fuel scout is called a dual fuel because it takes both an 18650, that's a lithium ion rechargeable battery, or two 123s. Um, again, this is our hybrid beam pattern. Um, so it's, it's got uh, a hot spot, but also a good amount of peripheral flood. Um, this puts out 1500 lumens with that 18650. Super awesome uh, weapon light there. Um, and then lastly, and when I should so say also, we have, uh, I think it's out here, like right there. No, that's a turbo series, but we have a, a standard, you know, whether you just want disposable batteries, our standard M640 Scout light that runs off of two 123s, very similar to that, but just not dual fuel capability. Um, and then we also have our turbo series. The full size variant takes uh, an 18650 or the two 123s. The mini variant takes an 18350 okay. or one 123. Um, the turbo series is our uh, high candela. Basically, it's a narrow, far-reaching beam pattern. So as opposed to where the hybrid has, you know, a, a hot spot but with a little bit of spill, this is fully hot spot but gives you a lot more distance out of it. So really good for seeing a bit further, uh, maybe shooting around barricades and whatnot where you don't have quite as much splashback if you're shooting like a VTAC barricade or anything similar to that. Um, and this is becoming quite popular. Uh, as far as a, a desired beam pattern right now. So these uh, have 71,000 candela, so they reach out seriously far. Uh, I just shot a low light match with one of these out in, uh, in, a, in Wyoming, uh, and it's super awesome, especially for hitting steel at distance. So I'm um, really excited about these, and these will be doing very well. Uh, and also, again, these use the same Scout Pro mount, which is both, it comes with both a Picatinny and an M-Lock mount. Um, so yeah, I think that about covers. Oh, and one more thing. <laughs> is uh, accessories so switching is extremely important being able to you know intuitively and reliably activate your your weapon lights um, so we make a, a myriad of, of switching options remote pressure switches um, for for all of these so whether you want a remote switch that's momentary only that's our st07 um, we have like what i like which is on this rifle right here my personal um, is the sr07 so what that is is a rail grabbing pressure switch so you could put it on a picatinny rail uh, and there's a momentary pad and also a constant on pad. So momentary pad on top and then a constant on pad in the front. Um, and then we have, you know, a dual switch that can work a laser and your weapon light. Uh, and like I mentioned before, also a, a momentary only. Um, obviously with these accessory switches, you need to get the tail cap that accepts the plug socket. So uh, on that and, and right here is our dual switch, has both a plug socket for the pressure switch as well as a push button. So. Um, a lot of different options there, uh, just so you can get it exactly the way you want it. You can activate it exactly the way you want it, and uh, yeah. Yeah, awesome. I'm glad you touched on the uh, the, the tail cap options, because that's that's something, as far as these lights go, that really set it apart for me. Mm -hmm. um, being able to, you know, plug into that, being able to plug into your, your laser device, anything like that. And, you know, it's funny, because I, I kind of remember back when, you know, if you were going to put a flashlight on your gun, or a, a torch, um, the way you had it, you had to get like the one inch ring mount that mounted to your quadril because that's all you had back then. And then you had to mount the light. It was basically a handheld light inside of that. So it's crazy to see how far these lights have come as far as like innovation goes and being specific for a purpose. Absolutely. I mean, and, and it's funny you mentioned that. I was just talking to somebody else about this. You can still do that as a, as a cost effective option. You know what I mean? If you right. have like a very Spartan, uh, you know, full like you know, Spartan carbine home defense setup, um, you can still get good weapon light on it. Like our, our G2X tactical, it's our G2X-C. It's a high output only light. Um, Magpul and a bunch of other companies make one inch mounts for it for right. both Picatinny and M-Lock. So, I mean, that's a really good budget uh, option for about a hundred bucks or so um, for, for a long gun weapon light. Now, these have a lot more flexibility in the way that they mount and the, and the switches are a little bit more purpose built so that when you sling it, it's not being, you know, white light negligent discharge, so on and so forth. Obviously, these are the ideal way to go. But uh, yeah, that's that's a good, that's where it came from, but it's also still an option these days. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, I, I was kind of hating on it a little bit, but you can still do it, a cost effective <laughs> option. Um, so yeah, and with that, you know, I also just wanted to kind of go back and touch on the way these M-Lock mounts get so close to your, your handguard. It's insane. Uh, so if you're not running an M-Lock handguard, you're, you're probably wrong. Uh, so you should probably be running an M-Lock handguard. Um, just kidding. Run whatever you want. But the, like how close you can actually tuck that light in yep. is, is crazy. And that's, that's kind of a big deal for me. I, I hate, you know, a bunch of stuff. Because the reason I'm running an M-Lock handguard is to get everything nice and tight. Uh, and run slim and having a light that just sticks way out could totally defeats that purpose but uh, but now you don't have to worry about that so yes sir but uh andrew thanks for coming out thanks for going over this stuff with us 
And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.